Well, it's that time of year again. It's the fall where Adobe hosts their big conference, Adobe Max. We get new apps, we get new features. We're gonna cover what's new inside of Lightroom Classic in this video here. A uh, couple things before we get started about the upgrade process, if you haven't done it already. So we're on Lightroom Classic version 15, okay? Not to be confused with Lightroom, which is on version nine. So Lightroom Classic is on version 15. So when you go to the Adobe Creative Cloud Updater, you're gonna look for version 15. It gets installed on top of, it replaces your older version. It does this automatically. You don't have to do anything about it. The one thing I wanna call your attention to, and I got a little tip for you before the video even really starts, is you will have to upgrade your catalog. This happens every single year when we do this update. If yours looks like mine on the screen here, what you get is your Lightroom catalog V1312, whatever, dash this, dash whatever, and it keeps appending things onto it every single year. And so that number just becomes a mess. You can go, after you do the upgrade and all that stuff, you can go to the file menu inside of Lightroom Classic and choose rename catalog and rename it to whatever you want. So hopefully it makes a little bit more sense. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first feature I'm going to share is probably one of my favorite ones. I use it as a landscape photographer quite a bit, but you talk to a lot of portrait photographers and, and they use it as well. It's called variance. Let me explain the problem. Happens a lot in landscapes where you've got, for example, a sky. And depending on the sun angle, depending on a filter that you might be using, depending on how wide angle you shoot, sometimes you see a darker blue area in that sky and then you'll see it fade off, okay? To me, that's a problem, especially in a photo because we don't really have anything else to reference it by. So we look at this and we kind of get caught up on it. Now, you would normally find it under color mixer. You would take your eyedropper and you would sample a color and then you'll see hue, saturation and luminance shift, but now you see a variance adjustment in there as well. This made its way into camera raw a little while back, but it's now made its way into Lightroom as well. So you'll see that variance adjustment. The problem is if I use it here, it adjusts the entire photo. So there's a couple of tips for this one. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Tip number one would be use it on a mask. So let's go to our masking tools. We'll make a sky mask. Once you make a sky mask, you'll see your point color panel inside of there. So you do it the same way. Take the dropper, click on a color, and then come down here. Now I can adjust the variance. So as I move it to the left, it really reduces the contrast of those, the variance, if you will, of those blue colors. So they look more uniform. As I drag it to the right, we'll drag it back to center. As I drag it to the right, it actually increases that, okay? So maybe you want that effect. Maybe you don't, you have fall colors and landscapes. I think you might actually want to increase it, uh, separate some of those color tones a little bit. But in this case, I want to reduce that. A lot of people find it useful on faces and portraits to smooth out some of the skin tones in there. So that's tip number one. Um, and then tip number two, which I found out from my buddy, Brian Matias, is from the Adobe engineers, would be, let's say you wanted to do something else to the sky. So I've already reduced the variance in here. I've, I've taken it down so that it's a smoother blend in all those blues. But let's say I also wanna make the sky brighter. Maybe I wanna make the sky a little bit more saturated. The tip came from the engineers to create a new mask to do that. So go back there, go to select sky. And now if you are going to do that, even if you're gonna work on those blues in there, go back in there. I don't obviously don't want to make it more saturated. It looks plenty saturated already, but you can go in there and do your adjustments on another mask to keep that variance adjustment essentially on its own uh, mask inside of there. Okay, next one up, let's go into a photo with a lot of sensor spots in here in dust. Uh, again, this was another one that made its way into Camera Raw. Now we have it in Lightroom. If you go to your uh, little eraser icon to your remove section up there, under distraction removal, you can scroll down and you can see there's a dust option. Click on apply, it'll go through there. It'll find all of the little dust spots in your photo and automatically remove them for you. Some people talk about it working on scan. Some people talk about it not. It just, you give it a try. It's one of those features. There's not a lot of settings to it. There really aren't any settings to it. Um, give it a try. Maybe it works for you. Maybe it doesn't. I am happy though, since it first came out, when it came out in Camera Raw, the visualized spots, which I always found very useful, was grayed out up here, but they actually added it down here. So now you can visualize spots so you can actually go in there and see if there are any spots left. 
because to me, once you apply this and it's grayed out, I, I might still see a spot or might need help seeing spots and it's, uh, it's nice to have it down there. Next one, another favorite of mine, this goes back a, a few months where Adobe introduced some masking tools. So if you go to the masking section, uh, a few months back, Adobe or released the landscape masks. So we click on landscape and it found all of these different landscape features in your photo. And I would told people it doesn't have to be a landscape, any outdoor photo will benefit from this. So there were seven in total. I'm probably not gonna remember all of them, sky, mountains, water, natural ground, artificial ground, vegetation, I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully I'll remember to put a little screen capture up on the screen here to let you know, but they have added snow into that there. Okay, so now I can click on snow and I can create a mask. So you can see sky, mountains, water, and now we have snow as an option for our landscape masking. This is also the perfect time to tell you about my scene split mini course and presets. Uh, the masking that we, we have with the landscape masks that we have are available in Lightroom Classic, Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw. They all share the same masking tools, meaning they all share the same features. So now that we have a new mask inside of here, the snow mask, it was a perfect time to update uh, that little mini course and presets in there you get essentially two parts to it. You get the presets, which is your creative boost to either speed things up or give you ideas um, and creative ideas on how you can edit your photos for everything from the skies to uh, the foreground elements in there and really break apart your photo into all those different areas so that you can very quickly edit them. Okay, and then from there, you also get the mini course. The mini course explains what all these masks are in detail, shows you how to use them because it's, it's easy to just use them on their own, but once you start combining them and learning how to combine them with all the other masks inside of there, that's when masking gets really, really powerful. And you start to realize I can mask anything almost automatically using these adaptive presets and this adaptive technology in there. So a uh, real easy course on sale now, super easy to get through, super easy to, uh, to watch and figure out. So hopefully you'll swing by and find out a little bit more. All right, let's jump back over here to the tutorial uh, to the next feature, which actually it's really just an update or an improvement to an existing feature. But I found a lot of people don't know this feature exists. So I'll, I'll show it really quick. Go to your remove section. Click on that little eraser. Uh, we'll go to the mode here and we'll actually click on the remove eraser icon. And there is a little checkbox here called detect objects. So if I don't use it and I just select an area, nothing happens. It just tries to erase whatever area I've selected in there. If I use detect objects, it's gonna to try to work with the boundaries of that. So in this case, what's improved is, is now I'll just go ahead and select the boat. And what you'll find is once you select your object, it will do a pretty good job of going in there and try to find reflections and shadows. Okay, so you see it went a little bit bigger than that. I'll just go ahead and click remove and we'll see how it does. It should do a pretty decent job in there, but mm, yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, but anyway, just again, an improvement to an existing feature inside of there. And it's a feature that I just found a lot of people didn't even know uh, existed. Okay, let's look to what I think Adobe would probably call the star of the show. Um, it's really mainly meant for, for portrait photographers. Um, so I'm not really a portrait photographer, so it's definitely not a star of the show for me, but uh, I'll give you a quick introduction to it here and basically just say, I think, you know, over the next few days, you'll probably see lots of videos come out. So maybe go to some of your other uh, favorite channels inside of there. And I think you'll find more information on this. I'm just gonna give you a, a quick overview, which is called assisted culling. So it's gonna be in the library module and you're gonna find it over here on the top right. It says early access. So you're gonna click on it and open it. Uh, essentially what it does is when you first go into it with a folder, when you're looking at a folder, it's going to, it's going to review the images, okay? It's basically looking at the image information. Depending on how many photos you got in that folder, it could take a while, okay? So it's gonna review that information. Then you start to get some options in here. What do you wanna do for selection? Do you want to select uh, subject focus? Do you wanna do it based on eye focus? Do you wanna do it based on eyes open? So I'll go over here and do eye focus, okay? And then you can essentially change this to whether you want them really sharp or really soft, all right? In my experience, I, 
I, I move it over to sharp and it deselects so many photos. You can see all the little X's inside of there. And when I look at one compared to another one, they both look really good to me. So if I were to look at that one, I were to zoom into both of those. Uh, essentially, the, the, in my experience, just take my word for it because I don't want to waste too much of your time here, but they generally look the same. I'm sure it works. It's, it's Adobe does a good job with this stuff. It's just not something that, that I would use a lot down here. So this is what photos do you want to select? Uh, what photos do you want to reject altogether? Okay, so you can see there's a couple of options in there. And then do you want to view just the selects? Do you want to view the rejects or do you want to view them all? Okay, so that's just a very, very quick introduction to assisted culling. It really is meant more for portraits. Now, I expect this to grow. It, it's got to grow. There's other programs out there uh, that do this, and now Adobe's in the game, and you know uh, they're going to definitely take it up a notch and start to compete with some of those other apps that are out there. So I definitely, uh, I definitely expect to see this grow over time. Right now, this is the uh, first iteration of it. What I will say is there's also uh, there's also an option in here for stacking. So we're going to go to another photo because for this, I find you don't necessarily need, it's not just portrait based, okay? So we'll go down here to stacking and you'll see there's an option to auto stack. Okay, so assisted culling, pretty much useless for this, but we go down there to stacking to auto stack. And then we get an option here. Do we want to stack by capture time, which in a way we've been able to do before, uh, or do we want to stack by visual simul similarity? I could see landscape photographers using this. I could see wildlife photographers using this. I could see anybody using this really. And then essentially you bring it over to less similar or more similar. Okay. As you move that over to the right, you're going to get more stacks. As you move it over to the left, you're naturally going to get many less stacks. And you can see uh, the number listed in each stack there. So this seems to be the sweet spot for this photo shoot. But again, that's going to probably be, be different for every one of them that's out there. Uh, the last thing I'll do is I'll put up the screen that, that kind of pops up when you first install Lightroom Classic or the update, the new version of Lightroom Classic here. I'll throw up a screen because there's a lot of other little features that aren't just things I would cover in the video. Uh, reflection, the reflection removal, it's just improved. It doesn't, there's no new features to it. It's just improved. Uh, there's camera support, there's improved tether support, improved performance, all those things. So you can read a little bit more about that and always refer to Adobe if you have any questions. Uh, the last thing that'll point out is that Lightroom Classic's not the only thing that was updated. If you're a Lightroom Classic user, chances are you're probably a Photoshop user. Uh, if you're looking to see what's new inside of Photoshop, I did a separate video on that, so that's a great place to go to next.